All right, everybody. It's uh, last day of March, March 31st, and uh, <clears throat> out here in the garden. I got off of work a little bit early today. I uh, actually had the opportunity to do that, so I took it because that ain't going to happen again. <laughs> and I wanted to... I wanted to get to doing some things around here. My wife has something she wants me to do because she's working from home now. <laughs> she's able to see patients uh, via telemedicine. I can't do my job in medicine on the computer. Mine is a hands-on job. So uh, <laughs> I have to go to work, which is okay because we're both employed still which is a lot better than what a lot of people can say now <clears throat> kind of where I wanted to talk today I mean it's a terrible time and I feel terrible for people that are out there that are going through hard times I can't imagine losing a job and you got a kid or kids you got people depending on you as a family unit as an individual to to get things done and as a parent every parent out there knows and I guess someone that loves someone else knows the harsh realities of Losing the ability to take care of someone that depends on you looms heavy. One of the reasons I went down the road I went down a long time ago when my daughter was born. My daughter was one month old, one month old, when Hurricane Katrina hit. And uh, we evacuated. from my house and we went to Dallas, Texas and we live outside, well we used to, well we still do, but different places, we used to live not too far outside of uh, New Orleans and we worked in New Orleans, both me and my wife worked in New Orleans at hospitals in, in the city and I remember it took us 19 hours to get to Dallas 19 hours on the road with a one month old <sighs> flat tire along the way because we were convoying with parents and relatives so we get to the place we stay and there's a nice little there's a nice little place almost like we were on vacation never been to Dallas before so we had a chance to you know go around and look but that night Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans with its full force in the Mississippi Gulf Coast in New Orleans with the full force of that storm we've been through storms we've been through the we, we've been through the uh, we've been through the riot drill before it, it's here, here it is again just gonna do it again and we watching, and all of a sudden we start seeing the reports of the city was being flooded and going under. And then I actually saw a picture of the hospital I worked at, and there was water halfway up the front door of the ER. And I was like, oh. So that means the entire basement, which is the morgue and all, there's a lot of infrastructure underneath those hospitals. And I was like, oh Lord, it's over with. I mean, we don't have jobs. And I looked at my wife and I told her, you know, because her hospital was right next to my hospital. And so whatever happened to that one happened to us. I looked at her and I said, baby, we don't have jobs anymore. It's, it's, this is bad. And she looked at us. She said, no, we'll have jobs. I don't, I don't think the reality had hit her yet. And it was later that night, we were laying down in bed, and we were just, you know, how you lay down in bed after a shock, and your eyes are open, you just stand at the dark, and 
your mind's running and I hear a voice you know and it's cracking and she goes oh my god what are we gonna do the realization hit you know I said we got good family we got good support this is you know in Hurricane Katrina as bad as it was this is Hurricane Katrina times 10 million times quadrillion it, there's not even a comparison what's going on right now people don't understand it this is global we had people that would help us outside of the, the damage zone there's no there's no help outside the damage zone on this the entire world is the damage zone the the, the there's no everyone's affected you don't get help you don't get to go stay at someone's house you don't get to rebuild from afar. We are all in this. Has anyone really asked the question, how do you come out of this? What politician is going to stand up and say, okay, everything's better. Let's go back to work. That, that, that's signing a death warrant because you know as soon as you do, hey, it's all over. Let's go back. Two weeks later, a little hot spot pops up, two or three people die. They're going to want that politician's head on a platter or head on a stick, however you want to say it. So no one's going to be willing to say, yay, we beat it. We in trouble. And if you can't see that trouble coming, you got your eyes closed. Open them up. Uh, I'm not terrified. I'm not shaking in my boots. Wearing my boots pretty good. But I am kind of nervous about what's coming. I have set myself up. I have prepared for this since 2005. Because after Katrina, I started preparing. I started sacking away stuff in the case of for emergencies. I started picking and choosing how I work and what job I take based off of where it would best position me. And I got laughed at. Because, you know, if you come from an educated background and I have multiple degrees and so, do, so my wife has very many multiple degrees and higher levels of education so but anyway you get laughed at you get looked at and I don't care because you know what come tell me to my face and you know if you got a real problem with me we'll settle it square up face to face I ain't scared of nothing I mean, I'll, I I might die. I might be. I might not be able to. I'm, I know I can't beat everybody, but I ain't never gonna back down, and I ain't never gonna stop doing what I feel is right, because I stand with my morals and my ethics, and my. I'm, I have religion, I have my beliefs, and I have a standard to where I live life, and no one's gonna ever tell me to stop doing that. So, when people look at you all these years, that you were the goofball, you wasted your time, not so much anymore. And part of that was learning how to grow food, have chickens, start homestead. I'm a little bit behind the curve. There's a lot of homesteads that's way ahead of me. But you know what? If you look at them, if you commercialized yourself too much, you actually dug yourself into a hole as that, as that kind of homesteader. They're a lot reliant on other things. There's a few homestead channels that are just, man, they got it together. But most of them, it's more people that's getting up in the age and then some of them that are young, I have a deep feeling that there's more going on behind the scenes than what they're showing on the channel. 
my what I did this for, why I started the channel was so that other people like me, because I know there's a lot out there and they don't want to stand up and wave their hands or say, but I remember I got a lot from these kind of channels. The ones that, you know, didn't know everything, but trying to figure it out and wanting to get there. I want to be able to, if the lights go out, if we go dark, if we have to truly isolate, like I can't walk out that driveway and go onto that road and drive down and go to the store and pick up something I need because, hey, I didn't have this. If I have to truly sit here, how long can I do that for with what I have on this property? So you have to become somewhat of a prepper because you have to be prepared prepper prepared and then you also have to be a homesteader you have to have the knowledge to do everything you can with those things that you have on site sometimes it means you have to improvise you have to uh, overcome things and I guess like that movie Heartbreak Wish, improvise, overcome, adapt. Clint Eastwood said that in that movie. And his words ring true, military or not. Anyway, so what I was going to do today was build a podium for my wife. But the wind has kicked up. <laughs> she needs a podium, not a podium, something to put her computer on. Because she can't sit down all day and she needs to stand up. Because her back starts hurting. You got to deal with those ergonomics, you know. And uh, her, her place hasn't even addressed buying her a chair to sit in at home. That would be like the ones they use at their work. When you have to sit at a desk all day. And we just have regular standard desk chairs. And she says it kills her back. So she wants me to get her, build her uh, a box. That'll be to put her computer at the right height. Anyway. I'm going to do that later on while I'm not burning daylight. What I'm going to do today, and uh, I hope I can put this on my head. I hope I kind of got through to some people, you know. What my channel's about is trying to show people how to start homesteading. I know a lot of this. I know how to grow stuff. I've grown tomatoes. I'm gonna, I'll show you all some of my gardens from the past. And let me tell you, I ain't never had a problem setting back many, many tomatoes. I've given away hundreds and hundreds of pounds of tomatoes in just a small at-home garden without any kind of implements. I did it with shovels and stuff. And I that, no problem. I'm trying to do this on a grander scale now. And see if I can really keep up with the big, well not big, big boys because that's just not going to happen. But at least in a bigger scale. I want to show you how it is. I'm a study. I'm studying homestead. Hence the homestead study. I am a study of the, of the methods that will be used. And... A lot of things I do know, but there's some things that are just plumb dumb easy and I just didn't know. I'm looking at people's gardens. Let me show y'all something. I'm looking at people's gardens and I'm wondering how in the world, how in the world do they always have a, a, a garden that looks like this? The infield of the uh, World Series, College World Series baseball field. How do they always have it? It looks like it's perfectly every time. Well, hello, dummy. They did this almost every day, you know? You come and you just rake. You come through. I thought they were bending over, picking up every one of those leaves. I didn't know if you just came through and, you know, pass a rake, keep the germination from happening, and that's so easy. See right up against there. See that germination happening right there now? Now you do have to pick some, but if you just scratch the ground every day and take your time, you don't even have to be quick at it. Just get some scratched up. 
So I'm gonna get right there because uh, it's getting out of hand a little bit. And that's a big patch right there. I'm gonna have to do a little bit more work on that, but that's right at the edge. So I'm gonna keep that out of here. But if you keep it scratched, nothing will ever really take hold. I did not. <laughs> As easy as that is to understand that concept. And that's just easy. That is just an easy concept. I didn't have that in my repertoire. Back in my other garden, I always wondered, what exactly was this little four-prong rake really, really good for? Boy, I tell you what, I'm going to have to buy me another because this is a flimsy one, but... You know... Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? How that works? And after you do it, it just looks so pretty. It's kind of rake on that ground. Now, I was just doing this for demonstration purposes right here. I mean, look, that one little area. So I come down this row and I'll do the whole thing. Another tool you need is a pair of gloves. I was just doing a demonstration. No. So, people, there's always someone. The other day I was watching home, uh, Deep South Homestead and uh, Danny was telling his wife, Wanda, um, you know, just because you see a cucumber with a flower on the end of it doesn't mean that's going to be a cucumber. Someone as knowledgeable as what she is about a garden didn't know that that might not become a cucumber if it's not pollinated. I've known that forever. But, and I've always looked at them as the people that know more than anyone else. But she didn't know that. So not everybody knows everything. We all in a study. No one... Get over the God complexes of all these other people. Get out there and start learning pick up channels like I mean my little stupid channel here ain't got nobody listening to me hardly but you might get a nugget out of this you might get a you might get a little a little gra uh, grain of knowledge but mostly what I want you to see is that someone like me who ain't a big time professional in 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 agriculture I have a good background, but I can do it. And it means if I can do it, it certainly means you can do it. It certainly means someone else can do it. <laughs> I guarantee you. I guarantee you if I'm doing this, you can do this. So this right here, just what we're going to do today. This is a, a common way of trellising i've done it once before variations of it at my other house but this is the first time i'm doing and you can go look at uh i think hoss tools got a good uh hoss tools has a good tutorial on this it's called the florida weave y'all might see this out of sequence because of some of the things i had to say today that i want to get out there faster than uh i've been saving videos and I was going to do the sequence of how I do this garden but there was some things that I wanted to say about what's going on right now and I really want y'all to everybody saying don't worry we all going to be alright well I hope we all going to be all right. But the truth of it is, people, the, the harsh reality is that's not how things work all the time. That's not how the world works. And what's happening now is a defining shift in how this moment in history is going to... Something's happening here. This isn't the quiet time. This is going to be the era where the history books say they're going to name it something. Kids are going to learn about this in school. 
kids that are children right now are going to tell children that don't remember me. I remember what great grandpa said. Uh, I remember what old man live over there, JJV said. I remember what, how he used to explain how things were. And that's if I'm one of the ones that make it. And yeah, I think it's that real. I got a daughter in this world. My job as a person now, the day she was born, my job in this life changed from me just getting myself to heaven to I have to provide for her in the best of way to get her to heaven and also to get my wife to heaven. First and foremost, that's the job of a man. Secondly, is to help get everybody else there too, I believe. Not even secondly. It's all firstly to get everybody to that point. Because everybody's soul means just as much. Even the people we hate means just as much as the ones we hold dearest. No soul is worth less than another. And I believe that with all my heart. And these are going to be the times that try men's and women's and children's souls. I don't mean the sound like this is the end, but this is a time where the defining moments become very real. I do believe that's coming, and I don't think it'll be because a virus itself did this. I believe it's because the virus pushed us over the edge, the ledge that we were on the path to in the first place so buckle up get ready get yourself in the best position you can there's still a little time there might even be a little bit more time than I think get yourself there start trying learn pay attention to people that can teach there's a lot of people that can teach try and get it done people. try and do get to where you can learn be vigilant I'm not saying time is short I'm saying it looks like time is short and a lot of people will tell you if it looks like a duck and it walks like a duck and it sounds like a duck then it's a duck I'm hoping everyone out there does all right. I'm hoping two years from now I'm still talking on the channel and maybe growing to more than, you know, a couple people listening. And they're all saying, hey, you remember when you said that stuff? You was wrong. I want to be wrong. I do. I don't want to be right about this. No one wants to be right about hard times coming. But I don't see a way out. Anyone? No? Who can tell me what's the way out of this? How do we crawl out of this? I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> I hope y'all are having a decent time through this as far as what we can survive. And I'm so sorry for the people that lost y'all jobs. And don't know what tomorrow holds. None of us do, but some people have a harder time knowing that they don't have a job tomorrow. I am so terribly sorry for y'all, and I do say prayers for y'all. So does my whole family. I don't even know what else to say to y'all. Good luck, and God bless everyone. And uh, God willing, next year we'll be talking about something else in the garden the spring garden maybe we'll just be worried about the weather again all right i'll talk to y'all later